Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! For a month, I've been running the multiple Bloodstones build almost every game, and after about a hundred matches, with 65% win rate, I think I am ready to discuss its strengths and weaknesses. For the purpose of this topic, instead of showing you a match where Storm is stomping, and more or less any build would work, I'll be showing you a match where we completely lost control during the mid game and were seconds away from losing the match. This more accurately highlights Bloodstone Storm's defensive capabilities, while still demonstrating insane offensive side as the match turns. Let's first start with the build. In your average match, it looks like this. Bottle, Null Null, Threads, Kaya, Bloodstone, another Bloodstone. This already gives Storm great mana regeneration and bulky health and mana pool to survive shorter lockdowns. From here on, Storm is very flexible regarding future items. In the need of immediate defenses, BKB or Lincolns. In need of reliable lockdown, Hex. But the best matches are the ones where Storm isn't forced to itemize against certain heroes. On an average match with an average team, Storm with two Bloodstones has enough maneuverability to let his team initiate and eat the nastier disables and then engage and turn the fight to his favor. And if the enemy team lacks heavy disables altogether, even better, Storm already has 2.5k HP and can survive lesser lockdowns with no problems. And what I'm saying with this is that if the enemy doesn't have that many dangerous disables, after 2 bloodstones I would recommend immediately getting a third. The less methods enemy has to lock Storm in the place, the more value a third bloodstone gains. If Storm has managed to win or draw even in mid, his average timings should look like this. Minute 21st Bloodstone, Minute 32nd, Minute 35, third. Each Bloodstone massively accelerates Storm's farming capabilities, allowing him to acquire items and levels extremely fast. This also means that building Yules or Orchid before the Bloodstone will significantly delay the farm acceleration Storm wants to reach. And Storm wants to pick up that farming momentum, because there are some tasty options for late game itemization. After either the 3 Bloodstones or Chi and a defensive item, Hex should be picked up next. Not only it has high initial mana region, but 35 intelligence bonus too, further boosting Bloodstone regeneration. And let's not forget the most reliable disable coming with the active. For our last item, we are flexible. Orchid, an eventual Bloodthorn, will allow Storm to delete almost every hero on the map in mere seconds. However, if the enemy team is grouped up all the time, Bloodthorn loses its effectiveness and it can easily be removed. In that case, extra Bloodstone has higher value, especially if it would become the third Bloodstone after buying Lincoln's BKB first, allowing Storm to be more aggressive regarding disables prepared for him. My own favorite ultra late game setup is 3 Bloodstones, Hex, Yashakaya and Bloodthorn. However, the safer method, and what I would recommend to everyone else, is Hex. Upgraded Kaya to Preference, a defensive item, 2 Bloodstones, and the last slot is taken by either 3rd Bloodstone or Bloodthorn. Situational items such as Shiva's, Seon's Discs, or Aghanims can fit there too. So there we go. If the enemy hasn't finished the match by minute 30, Storm is now 25 and can begin to own more and more of the map's real estate. Not only does Insane Region allow him to cover large areas with ease, he also doesn't really feel the need to stop and punch anyone, since remnants do the job just fine. This translates in the entire enemy team either awkwardly chasing Storm around the whole map or just ignoring him and watching as none of the waves are able to reach the high ground anymore and heroes that wander off too far get deleted. With how hard Bloodstone Storm is to catch and kill, even after you spent 5 minutes laying out traps, baiting, forcing fights and eventually successfully killing Storm, he most likely has a buyback ready and the enemy team who used everything now has to play from a disadvantage again, giving Storm just enough time to farm and wait out for another buyback, thus repeating the cycle all over again. And all this time, while Storm controls the tempo of the game and secures all the lanes, his team either recovers lost space or can freely push to claim new space and objectives. Soon enough, the enemy simply doesn't have enough resources on the map and Storm can lead the team all the way to the enemy throne. Now of course, there are some games that even with the Bloodstone advantage Storm will lose. 
there are also games where Storm never gets to reach full Bloodstone advantage in the first place. Let's talk about how to counter the build in general if you're playing against the Bloodstone Storm. The classic lane picks that give him a hard time would delay his Bloodstone timings and then it is possible to end the game before Storm's turning point. Also, the heroes that tend to go snowball in the mid game would eat away the space from Storm's team, so even if Storm powers up eventually, his team could be playing from behind, leveraging out the situation. Also, before minute 30, Storm will still play pretty much like the old days, having only his starting items and a bloodstone. It is only after he gains the second one when the massive power spike is reached. And a Storm that is rushing bloodstones has weaker right clicks and is very vulnerable to disables during the mid game. Forcing the fights Storm wouldn't want to take would secure more space against Storm and the team before he is able to take it back. And even if he couldn't finish the game against Storm by 30 minutes, there still is hope. While Storm slowly becomes unstoppable, his team is likely still weak, so picking off weaker heroes and then going high ground is a good option. Storm likely doesn't have enough mana to defend against a number disadvantage, and Storm without mana will eventually have either to stop and die or retreat and let the team and towers die. Similar concept applies if the game drags on to the point where Storm is now 6 slotted, plays on another level, and catching him is out of the question. In this case, while Storm is certainly the hardest carry, he cannot solo carry the game, unfortunately. The only games I lost at that point are the ones where the enemy team simply healed through my damage, ignored me completely, and instead wiped out my team. And to survive through Storm's barrier of remnants, building defenses is the way to go. Pipe, Grief, Lotus, Wessel are the main ingredients. Satanic on cores, Glimmer on supports. Power through the remnants, then hit buildings as Storm is preparing the next jump session. And now let's talk when you, as a Storm, shouldn't run multiple Bloodstones just yet. Skip Bloodstone Rush if the enemy mid is someone who will most likely snowball and start taking space away from the team, such as Lycan, Huskar, Brud. Building items that will help you fight early won't leave your entire team crippled. Consider early yields in Chibi and if you want mid and an early Orchid can now secure much more space than a Bloodstone would, consider Orchid first. It shuts down heroes such as Ember, Anti-Mage, Juggernaut while they are weak and with a better team you could end before 30 minutes not even needing to worry about late. But that's about it. If neither your team nor the enemy team is capable of ending the game early, then it's an ideal scenario to start dominating from the moment second Bloodstone is bought. And if the game that was meant to end early, but dragged on, you can still start building bloodstones as soon as you see fit. Your previous yules or orchid will only further boost the incoming regeneration. Some final notes, don't be afraid to pick Storm into the regular counters. As long as you have a decent lane and don't reach your bloodstone timings too late, the counters do not matter much. A late game Storm that controls the map would never stop long enough to get caught in a black hole, chrono or ulted by anti-mage. And do not worry if you died a bunch with one or two bloodstones and lost on charges. The strength of the build comes not from the charges, but from the raw regeneration multiplier. For this reason, it is also not a big deal if Storm continues farming through the lane's jungle to reach good item timings instead of chasing questionable kills just for charges. And that is everything you wanted and needed to know about the Bloodstone Storm. I'm leaving you exactly at the turning point of this match and will keep it unedited so everyone can observe exactly how the hero begins to take over the game. Good luck! Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's middle tower isn't going to last long. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower just went down. It's under attack. Touche! I'm over here! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! Double kill! Oh. Killing spree! Triple kill! Over here now! Zap! Dyer's Ancient is under attack! Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Oh. Where do you think you're 
you're going. Here I am! Zip! Over here now! Jump! Ha ha! Dominating! Own it! Blown away! Bad at all. Pop. Over here now. Where's the party? Fire's ancient is under attack. Touche. Ho ho. Roshan has fallen to the radiant. Dyer's bottom tower is being chipped Over away! Here. Dyer's bottom tower always did get short shrift. Zip! Whoa, what I miss?
Here I am. <laughs> Radiant's top tower is under attack. Zip. Looking for me. Radiant's top tower deserves just as much help as bottom. Zip zap. Dire's bottom tower is being chipped Here away. I am. Radiant's top tower has looked better. Oh, what I miss! Touche! Oh, 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 Stupendous! Here I am! Zap! 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 Touché! Here I am! Over here now! Zip! Radiant's bottom tower's got problems! <laughs> Zap! <laughs> Whoa, what I miss? Putting 
pop. Ha! Over here now. What I miss? happening to Radiance Bottom Tower. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack! Zip zap! Whoa, what did I miss? Wooden pop! Over here now! Zap! Over here now! Zip! Now over here! Yeah! <laughs> Here I am! Touché! Let the fun begin! Looking for me? Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack! Radiance oh. fortified their structure. Ah, I'm over here! Here I am! What do you think? Blow the man! Zip! Zap! Dyer's Ancient is under attack! I think we're just about done here. Zap! Ho ho! Touche! Now over 
Invisibility. Stupendous. Oh, here I am. Zap. Looking for me. Oh, shit. Zip. Power shouldn't have to take this abuse. Zap. 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 Touche. Holy shit! Holy shit! Double kill. The middle tower is under attack. Where did Radiant's middle tower go? <laughs> Radiant's middle tower shouldn't have to take this abuse. <laughs> Radiant's middle guards are under attack. Oh, over here now. Here I am. Over here. Wooden pop. Look what they're doing to Radiant's oh, middle guards. Radiant's middle guards have fallen. Zip. 
over here now. Zap. Oh. I'm over here. Ha ha! Looking for me. Zap. Put and pop. Not much good's happening to Radiant's bottom tower. Radiant's bottom tower is no more. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Power. Dire victory! 